We all have problems. What's important is that when they arise, that we know how to solve them. In this Cisco Tech Talk, we're going to perform an RV340 series router WAN2 routing example with troubleshooting. Next. Before we start, we'll need a roadmap of our network. This is the network topology we'll use for this example. As we can see, there are two routers, router one and router two. The WAN1 interface of both routers is connected to the internet. That allows the VLAN1 traffic of each router to have internet access. We can see that both routers, WAN2s, are connected to the WAN service provider router. In our example, we're going to divert the LAN traffic of VLAN1 from router 2 through the WAN2 link toward router 1's VLAN1 interface. We'll configure both routers and the WAN service provider router in this scenario. Router 2 is connected to the WAN service provider router with the 70.0.0.0/30 private IP connectivity. Router 1 is connected to the WAN service provider router with the 40.0.0.0/30 IP connectivity. There are two hosts connected on the routers. On router 1, 192.168.200.107. On router 2, 192.168.170.109. We'll check the reachability from this host on router 2 to this host on router 1. Then we'll verify that the traffic from the hosts are forwarding through the WAN2 interface of the router 1 and 2. We'll start by configuring router 1. 192.168.200.1 is the VLAN 1 IP. Log into the router. On the status and statistics page, we'll be able to see the firmware information 1.0.03.21. Scroll down and we can see that WAN1 and WAN2 are both connected, up and configured with an IP address. WAN1 is already configured with a public IP and providing internet access. WAN2 is configured with the IP settings and is connected to the WAN service provider. On this router, we have to configure the static routing to forward the traffic to the next hop interface. This is the LAN IP pool 192.168.170.0 of the router 2. We are forwarding to the next hop interface that is configured on the WAN service provider router, that is 40.0.0.2, via the WAN 2 interface. And for the other side of the WAN link network, we are forwarding the traffic to the next hop interface, 40.0.0.2 via WAN2 interface. While we are configuring the static routing of the WAN2, we need to disable its NAT functionality. Navigate to Access Rules. Allow traffic from WAN2 to the VLAN1 interface. 4001 and 4002 are default. In this RV340 series router, we need to allow this rule manually. Navigate to basic settings where we have disabled the firewall settings currently for troubleshooting. However, we can enable that one and verify the services based on the requirement. To see the routing table, we can navigate to status and statistics, click on the routing table, and it will show the available routes on this router. We'll now check router two. Log in, and we'll see the firmware details. This is updated with 1.0.03.21. Both the WAN interfaces are connected, up, and configured with the IP. WAN 1 is configured with the public IP and providing the internet connectivity. WAN 2 is configured with our private IP, as mentioned, on the network topology. We've added the static route to forward the traffic of the router 1 LAN traffic towards the next hop interface that is configured on the WAN service provider router. Also, for the other side slash 30 IP link, that is 40.0.0.0, we're forwarding that traffic to the next hop interface, 70.0.0.1. Both are via the WAN 2 interface and metrics are configured as one. Navigate to Firewall Settings and check our network address translation. We can see that we've disabled the NAT functionality on the WAN2. WAN1 is doing the NATing to provide the internet connectivity to the VLAN1 users. And through WAN2 Link, we are using static routing to forward the traffic to the other site router. 
Also, we have allowed traffic from WAN 2 to VLAN 1. We need to configure this manually. We've disabled the firewall settings under the basic settings for troubleshooting purposes. We can verify that this router is getting the internet connectivity. We can ping any public domain name or IP, and we can see that it is getting a reply from that domain. Now we'll navigate to the WAN service provider router. We're using a Cisco Business RB340 series router. Once we log in, we can see that this one is upgraded with the 1.0.03.21 firmware. We'll see both WAN interfaces are connected. WAN 1 is connected to router 1 and WAN 2 is connected to router 2. We've configured the static route accordingly on this WAN service provider router. For router 1 LAN traffic, it's forwarding it to 40.0.0.1 via the LAN 1 interface. The LAN traffic of the router 2, 192.168.170.0, is forwarding the traffic to the 70.0.0.2 via the WAN 2 interface. Let's verify the reachability. This system, 192.168.170.109, is connected to the router 2 LAN interface. We can also see that under DHCP binding. We can also check on the other side router DHCP bindings, and we'll see there's a host connected, 192.168.200.107. We'll verify the reachability of this host, 192.168.200.107, from the host, 192.168.170.109. Ping 192.168.200.107. It's able to reach the other site network. To verify how it's reaching, we'll use the traceRT command and provide the IP of that remote site system. We'll see how the traffic is navigating from this system via the WAN2 link to the other site. The first hop will be the LAN interface of this router, that is 192.168.170.1. Then the traffic is reaching at the WAN service provider router WAN interface, that is 70.0.0.1. Then the traffic is reaching the WAN 2 interface of the router 1, that is 40.0.0.1. And finally, it's reaching the destination 192.168.200.107. We can also verify the other device's reachability, like we can verify the reachability of the VLAN 1 network of the router 1. It is pinging. We can verify the WAN2 interface IP of the remote side router. We can verify the WAN IP of the WAN service provider router as well. We can also verify the other side link reachability. In case any of these routes are missing on the WAN service provider side, then the reachability will be lost. On the WAN service provider router, we need to make sure every necessary route is configured. Also, we can troubleshoot this by using WAN packet capture on our WAN 2 in router 1. We'll start the packet capture and ping the router 1 WAN 2 interface. We can ping router 1's LAN interface, then ping the host connected on the router 1 VLAN 1 interface. Let's stop the packet capture and click export to see our results. We can save the file or open it using Wireshark. To verify the ping reply, we'll filter with the ICMP protocol. We can see the request and reply from the system. This is the system from 192.168.170.109 that has initiated the request and is getting a reply to the WAN2 interface of Router1. We can also see the request from the LAN interface. Also, we can see the reply from the host system as well. This is how we configure and verify the static routing via the WAN2 interface in Cisco Business RV340 series routers. Problem solved! Thanks for watching this Cisco Tech Talk. We'll see you next time.